Greetings to all my Harvest LA brothers and sisters. I miss seeing everyone and sometimes I feel so out of touch. Praise the Lord for technology. Today, the sharing is for Wednesday, October 7th. Let's pray. Dear God, please be with us as we read and share your word together. Lord, speak to each and every one of us in ways that we really need to hear it. I also pray that we take the opportunity to experience you and your Sabbath rest in whatever it is that we're doing or not doing. Keep all the families in prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 1 through 10, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. This is the message Jeremiah received concerning the Judeans living in northern Egypt, in the cities of Migdol, Tampanes, and Memphis, and in southern Egypt as well. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. You saw the calamity I brought on Jerusalem and all the towns of Judah. They now live deserted and in ruins. They provoked my anger with all their wickedness. They burned incense and worshipped other gods gods that neither they nor you nor any of your ancestors had ever even known. Again and again, I sent my servants, the prophets, to plead with them. Don't do these horrible things that I hate so much. But my people would not listen or turn back from their wicked ways. They kept on burning incense to these gods. And so my fury boiled over and fell like fire on the towns of Judah and into the streets of Jerusalem, and they are still a desolate ruin today. And now the Lord God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, asks you, Why are you destroying yourselves? For not one of you will, su will survive, not a man, woman, or child among you who has come here from Judah, not even the babies in your arms. Why provoke my anger by burning incense to the idols you have made here in Egypt? You will only destroy yourselves and make yourselves an object of cursing and mockery for all the nations on the, of the earth. Have you forgotten the sins of your ancestors, the sins of the kings and queens of Judah? and the sins you and your wives committed in Judah and Jerusalem. To this very hour, you have shown no remorse or reverence. No one has chosen to follow my word and the decrees I gave to you and your ancestors before you. In this passage, we hear the message of Jeremiah addressing the Israelites in Egypt. And how did they get there? For a long time, Jeremiah warned the people to repent from their own ways of idolatry and turn to God, but they didn't listen. Verses 3, 5, and 8 tells us that they kept on burning incense and worshipped other gods, and finally Jerusalem fell. Then they were commanded to not go to Egypt, yet a group of them went, and not to they go themselves, they took others by force. Jeremiah included, along with them. This was in Jeremiah 42. Think about the Israelites' stubbornness to sin and reflect on this. Are there sins in our lives so ingrained that we are not able to overcome and it's impacting our relationship with God as well? And by sin, it doesn't necessarily mean bad or evil per our own standards, as long as it is against God's will for us. These Israelites went to Egypt against God's command. Jerusalem fell, so what's wrong with them fleeing to Egypt? It's against God's will. God specifically asked them to stay, and even promised to build them up. But no, they went anyways. Egypt is always a symbolism for a lifestyle that is against God. Think of Exodus. The people wanted meat and the life they had back in Egypt instead of pursuing life in the promised land as God had commanded them. Think back to the Garden of Eden when Eve thought that the fruit was good for food and pleasing to the eye. 
One might think that desire to eat meat or fruit can't be equated to the stubbornness of worshiping idols, but the point is that it's about honoring God and obeying His commandments. So today, think about our own lives. Are there areas that we might not be honoring God completely? And let's trust in God's promise to uproot and tear down, but only to plant and build up again in accordance with His beautiful will. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we're able to live in the hope and reality of your salvation and deliverance in every moment of every day, regardless of the circumstances we're in. I pray that we will all learn the secret of living in every situation. Help us to be transformed so that we may bear witness to you and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. See you all next time.